Good evening, folks. How's everybody? I got 45 minutes and then I'm getting fired, so let's get going. Okay? Um, good evening, my name is Bill Harrington and thank you for uh, coming out tonight. It's, it's so nice to see people. Um, my wife took me out tonight and she's gonna drive me home and uh, she promised that I could have some ice cream. Um, <laughs> But in any event, it, it is really great to see y'all. And um, we're here, we have a really exciting night, a very appropriate um, program. We're gonna recognize some really important people um, and, and engage in a transition of, uh, in leadership, which is sorely needed. Um, you know, tonight tonight we, uh, we welcome a new talented uh, chairperson in Susan Fox, and I'll talk about her briefly but later, but she is, uh, she's a remarkable person and we're lucky to have her. Um, we also recognize three members of our association who represent the compelling mosaic of profit and nonprofit organizations that work together within the association to promote and uplift all the residents of this county and the Hudson Valley region. It, it's what makes our association so special. We stand for something, we fulfill the common good, we leave our egos at the door, we use plural pronouns because it's we, us, our, not me, my, or I. So tonight we recognize SCANSA in their environmentally responsible real estate development. They're a world-class operation. We recognize West Hab in the development of desperately needed affordable housing. Go to their website. It's fantastic. They build homes and they build people's futures. It's wonderful stuff. And we recognize WHC Health for their comprehensive integrated medical care for all residents in this county and region. It's really a remarkable story. A facility that when I first began this job almost 10 years ago, there was talk about it going bankrupt. There's no talk about that anymore because of the leadership and the talent that runs that organization and the great doctors and nurses that serve it. COVID has presented personal and business challenges to all of us. We're just tired of this nonsense. I've about had it. I want to pick a fight. I did and lost in January. Um, but I've gotten vaccinated and my booster, and if someone can give out pills, I'll take them. Because I like being here and I like being out with folks. Um, however, through this all, this organization didn't miss a beat. Through the leadership of our president and CEO, Michael Ramita, and our dedicated staff, which is remarkable. Amy Allen, Julia Emrick, who left? She's here, but she left. Um, Jason Chapin, Kathy Bly, and Melissa Luzzi, they kept the organization not only running, but excelling. We added programs. We added members. We actually made progress during a time where for not, most not-for-profits, it was just hard to keep the doors open. I'm very proud of them, and I think we all should be, too. So to move matters along, what I'll invite you to review this short video which reflects just some, but not certainly all, of the work that we've been doing at the WCA during COVID. Hello everyone. My thanks to the Westchester County Association for hosting this annual leadership event to honor and promote the achievements of people, businesses, and nonprofits that are positively impacting Westchester. It's great to see people from a wide variety of industries together to support this great county. My administration shares your vision for a better future for business and communities in Westchester, and we're committed to working together to ensure that that dream becomes a reality. We're excited to be back. We're excited to see all of you, and we're excited to get to work. The Westchester County Association is the most influential community of businesses and nonprofits in the region. Together, we strive to improve the health of our regional economy so that businesses will want to move here and grow and thrive. When you look at the hallmarks of a strong regional economy, 
they share certain commonalities. A strong financial base, access to an educated workforce, great schools, a strong regional healthcare sector, opportunities for affordable housing. These are the things that we work for, each important in their own right, but also designed to work synergistically as force multipliers. Healthcare is the largest economic engine in our community. It's hard to have a healthy medical community without a healthy economy behind it. The WCA has done such a great job in understanding the needs of healthcare providers. I think they spotted really early on this you know, challenge that we would all be facing with respect to the healthcare workforce. They've just been a great partner to Open Door and to many healthcare organizations. Clearly, the bioscience industry is key to the growth of, of Westchester and its economy. We have a thriving bio-incubator at New York Medical College. There's a bio-accelerator program. We can bring to the table our connections in the healthcare space, with the hospitals, with the universities, so we feel we're an important component of this countywide sector. Real Estate Task Force uh, has been a real uh, driver for bringing people together. How do we take all this office space that was built in the 60s and 70s right down the middle of the county across the 287 corridor, sort of reimagining what those old offices could be. So there are communities that have understood that there are a lot of tools in the toolbox. For example, New Rochelle adopted a form-based zoning for its downtown, or Yonkers by the waterfront, or downtown White Plains, other communities that have identified what they want and where they want it and tried to make that process more efficient if you fit within those parameters. It's been crippling for households to not have digital connectivity during the pandemic in a way that it wasn't crippling before. But if you're stuck at home and you have one phone and three kids and they all want to do their homework or they all want to attend class, it, it doesn't work. It's very, very clear that there is a digital divide between folks that can access technology and folks that cannot. The WCA deeply understands this and understands that providers enhancing their systems here and their networks here in Westchester is going to help and can position the county for economic growth like it never has before. And it's also very clear that it's up to leaders like all of us to do something about it. The Y-Zone Project is a big forward-looking initiative to put connectivity and devices, as well as digital literacy, into the hands of families who've really struggled with digital connectivity throughout the pandemic. What is very special about the WCA is that they're working with nonprofit, they're working with higher education, they're working with private industry to make this project happen. And they are able to take all these moving parts and do it successfully. Businesses need to understand that energy and sustainability is not just good for the environment, it's also accretive to the bottom line. Our efforts for reducing carbon to net zero for 2035 and net zero for 2045. These efforts are in play right now and you know by default our projects are impacted because of these goals, including the projects in Westchester County. We are not only preparing our students to become leaders in this field, we are committed to working with corporations and employers to make sure that they have the best practices. You look at some of the initiatives that we've undertaken. A clean energy and sustainability class. We graduated our first set of cohorts this year. In addition to that, we have a online energy navigator called the Clean Energy Portal, which will direct businesses and organizations which are interested in embracing these issues to resources and funding opportunities that are available to them. In its essence, think of it as business strategy viewed through the lens of environmentalism and social responsibility. If you solve for those factors, you'll make your business better. The Westchester County Association is about bringing business and not-for-profit leaders across different sectors together to identify issues and collaborate to find solutions that lift up the entire Westchester community. In 2022, I look forward to raising awareness about how we were able to mobilize in a crisis and apply those lessons to our current challenges to help accelerate positive change and continued growth.
Well, I was going to say that I'm the very definition of we'll clean it up on post-production, but then Marvin went and broke the film. So sorry about that, Marvin. I'm glad they got your, your voice in there anyway. Um, while the sponsors and the supporters are playing behind me, I want to give them some time on the screen, and I'll call out a few dignitaries who are here today. We have State Senators Harcum, Reichland Melnick, Senator Mayer, um, county executive is here, and members of his staff, also a number of our county legislators, including County Legislator Boykin, Borgia Parker, and representatives from Senator Chuck Schumer's office. Megan is here, Megan Glander, and I believe Lisa was uh, supposed to show up from Senator Gillibrand's office as well. We've also got Mayor Tom Roach, Mayor of White Plains. Um, because my folks were always big uh, supporters of uh, higher education, we've got representatives from the higher education sector here as well, including Presidents Kerry of Iona, President Krizlov of Pace, President Pena of SUNY Purchase, President Hall of Mercy College, and President Linda Miles of the Westchester Community College. Um, it's the holiday season, so we all need to remember to give thanks for all that we have. And I've got a couple of things on my mind. First, I give thanks that my law school alma mater, the University of Michigan, finally beat, finally <laughs> beat that damn school to the south. Um, I'm also very grateful to the WCA staff who spend their professional lives thinking of ways to help your organizations do better. I'm also very grateful that I get to lead this great organization where the private sector, our educational institutions, our nonprofits, and our government sector join and come together to think strategically to ensure that Westchester remains a premier business destination, a major economic hub, and one that's poised for smart growth. Now I'm going to ask George to come up and say a few words. He will tell you that he is still, in many ways, the local kid from Mount Vernon. And he has risen to the heights of elected office through sheer grit, pluck, perseverance, and hard work. He doesn't take shortcuts and isn't shy away from the hard decisions. Thanks for joining us, George. Thank you very much, Michael. It's a real pleasure to be with you here tonight. Had things turned out uh, differently earlier this month, I might have been here at the uh, cocktail hour with copies of my resume in my pocket, buttonholing some of you in the cocktail hour. But it didn't turn out that way, so I've been reauthorized for another couple of years in this great responsibility that I have. Thank you. And, and I am joined tonight by uh, the, the key executives that, that really are the, uh, the, the great advantage that we have in Westchester County. Ken Jenkins, Deputy County Executive, is with us. I believe Joan McDonald, our Director of Operations, is here. I haven't seen her yet, but Bridget Gibbons, our Director of Economic Development. Deb Novick, who works alongside of her. Uh, Richard Wishney, a colleague of mine uh, from legislative days who now heads up emergency services. Other members of my team, Tom Kleiner, I guess. Um, but the bottom line is we're all very happy to be here with you, Michael and Amy. And, and we really appreciate the work that this association has done. Just yesterday, I gave Michael a call, and I asked for him to survey and give me some sense, give us a sense of, of how the business community looks at the challenges we face uh, with the coming of uh, Omicron and, and what our options are as a government, what we should do. But we don't want to make those decisions by ourselves as politicians in a room. We want to reach out to the people who it affects. And so Michael and, and the rest of you will give us input, and we'll try to learn from that that experience. Um, I remember a very important conversation I had with my father. He was sick at the time. Uh, we lost him subsequently, but not during the time of this hospitalization. I was at the Mount Vernon Hospital. I was probably uh, late in my 30s, and he was a man in his early 80s at the time. And uh, I was sitting bedside with him as he was in the process of trying to recuperate. And um, I said, Dad, you know, how do you feel? How are you going to get through this? And he said to me, son, I'm going to get through this. I've, I've been through tougher times than this. And he looked at me and he said, but you have never been tested. And I said, Pop, what do you mean by that? I grew up on the south side of Mount Vernon, blue collar family, commuter to college, working while I'm going to college. And I kind of thought, you know, I'd earn some of the, the way of my life. But he said to me, you never went through a Great Depression. How many of you had a father or mother said this to you? You didn't go through a Great Depression and drop out of high school to make any money necessary to help the family have food on the table. He said, and you haven't been asked to go overseas to go to war. And I went through that, and your mother went through that. 
And he says, your generation's had it pretty good. And when I think about the testing that every American generation goes through, you know, from uh, Lexington Concord to Yorktown, eight years roughly, if I remember my American history straight, and um, the World War II that he referenced from Pearl Harbor uh, until VJ Day was almost four solid years of not knowing how things would turn out. So today we're in the middle of a pandemic. I hope we're closer to the end of the pandemic. I joined Billy Harrington in believing that we're closer to the end than the beginning of this thing. But, but we're, we're going through a test, a societal test. And, and older than I am now, just about than he was then, I know what my father is thinking. You're getting tested. And this organization, with Michael and his team, have been showing leadership during a period of time of great adversity. And for that, Michael, we all owe you a debt of gratitude that you're able to hold things together, move us forward, have the dialogue from a government standpoint, from a business standpoint, and from a community standpoint, the not-for-profits that are represented in this room, and what all of those things represent. Tonight, you're going to honor some uh, tremendous organizations here, Skanska and the great work that they've done, West Hab and the work that they have done, WMC Health, What's been more critical to us in vaccinations at the county center and elsewhere than what WMC Health has done? These, these organizations are worthy of the praise that they're going to receive tonight. And in honor of one of the great predecessors that I hope someday I might even be mentioned in the same name as Al Del Bello, uh, tonight the, the award in his recognition is going to be given to Bill Harrington, who's earned every bit of it. And while I've never I'm not a lawyer. I haven't been across the, uh, the courtroom uh, dealing with Bill Harrington. I once went to a meeting of the Pound Ridge Town Board, and there's Bill Harrington sitting right there. And I said, uh-oh, better watch what I say here. Councillor Harrington knows his stuff, even in the Town Board of Pound Ridge. And you've done so many things, Bill. We worked to try to get basketball into the county center before we got vaccinations into the county center. And you, you richly deserve the award that you're going to receive tonight and for, for the people that are going to present it to him, certainly the great D. Del Bello. Um, uh, as, as a successor to Al Del Bello, I don't think I'll ever be really a successor to Al, just a person who sat in the same seat. Together, we will work through this pandemic. Together, we will find a way, because we are resilient. We are able to, uh, to deal with the crisis at hand. Michael, thank you again for your leadership, and I hope we will continue to be good partners in the county of Westchester. Thank you. Well, thank you, George. Um, we have some hardware to hand out. Our first awardee this evening is Skanska. Skanska is one of the largest project development and construction companies in the world, and they have a tremendous presence right here in Westchester and in the Mid-Hudson Valley. For example, they recently developed a state-of-the-art ambulatory care facility for WMC Health in Valhalla. But what makes them special and makes them stand apart is their dedication to organizational sustainability. It's a strategic decision to respect and enhance the natural environment, even as they work to develop the built environment. For this, the Westchester County Association recognizes Skanska with our 2021 Leadership Award. Accepting a night tonight for Skanska is Theo Diamantis and uh, Michael Vigiano, their Executive Vice President. Good evening, and thank you on behalf of Skanska. Uh, as Mike mentioned, I'm Theodora Diamantis, I'm Vice President and Account Manager for Skanska. Uh, we have a purpose. We build what matters. Um, it's visible on our projects uh, that we work on every day and within Westchester County as well. We build for a better society in the communities that we live and we work in. Skanska also is a leader in the green construction industry and we're not afraid to push the boundaries and come up with long-term solutions that protect our communities and the environment. Westchester is a special place. I, along with uh, many Skanska employees, live in Westchester and uh, 
I think everyone would agree it is a special place. And that's why I'm super passionate about participating in the initiatives that could transform um, our neighborhoods, our hospitals, our schools, um, the list goes on, and even our infrastructure. Um, with that, I just want to say I'm really proud to be a board member, and I'm looking forward to an exciting year. Uh, thank you again for this tremendous honor. I would, I would just like to uh, echo Theo's sentiments and, and give a big thank you um, to the w WCA for this, uh, this, this great award. Um, Skanska's, Skanska's two core values, two of our core values are um, care for life and to, and to be better together. And as a, as, a, as a company, we look to partner with organizations that embody those same, those same qualities. So, and, and really that's what we have here with the WCA. So um, we look forward to building on that partnership and uh, continue to build great projects and make Westchester a better place to live. Thank you. Our next awardee is Westhab, a Westchester-based affordable housing developer that combines these efforts with social services to create a comprehensive approach to community development. Moreover, when the Westchester County Association initiated the groundbreaking Y-Zone Digital Opportunity Zone pilot in Yonkers, Westhab stepped in with contributed resources and the dedication to provide Y-Zone internet service to its brand new Day Springs Commons development. For sharing the WCA's vision of a better future for businesses and communities in Westchester, West Tab is a recipient of our 2021 Leadership Award. Accepting today is their president and CEO and a fellow Jumbo, Rich Nightingale. Thank you. Yeah, we had to get the Tufts mentioned in there. That's important. Uh, we're so grateful to be here tonight with everyone. Obviously, everyone likes to get out of the house these days, as evidenced by this incredible crowd. Uh, I want to thank my team from West Hab. So many of them are here tonight. West Hab is celebrating its 40th year in our community this year. When uh, the video played earlier, I realized how many different things we're doing together. So I'm a survivor or graduate of the sustainable business class together. Uh, many a Zoom with this guy. Uh, obviously in the affordable housing space and building a Westchester that works for everybody. And then the Y-Zone initiative, delivering free Wi-Fi and digital equity in Southwest Yonkers, which is super important. As we talk about getting through the pandemic together, more than 2,000 households call West Hab home. When you are someone's home, you never close. We never closed for a minute. I'm deeply grateful to our frontline essential staff that did this hard work every day. So it's really a very special time for us to receive this award. We're deeply grateful. We look forward to this partnership. I'll take my stop. I'll leave my stop. Our next awardee is WMC Health. Westchester Medical Center Health Network is one of the largest healthcare providers in the state, with 10 hospitals spanning eight campuses across the Hudson Valley, plus a plethora of additional integrated healthcare systems. They've been at the forefront of addressing global pandemics since their founding over 100 years ago when the WMC Center was established as an army hospital caring for soldiers who had fallen victim to the Spanish flu. Fast forward 100 years and they're still at it. As the COVID-19 vaccines were rolled out, they were appointed the hub of a seven-county Hudson Valley task force responsible for developing the regional implementation plan, ensuring equitable vaccine distribution and managing four regional task forces. We at the WCA have been a long-standing partner and advocate for our regional health care sector, and we're delighted to honor WMC Health with our 2021 Leadership Award. Accepting tonight, on behalf of WMC Health, is their president and CEO, Michael Israel.
Michael, thank you uh, for the uh, warm introduction, and I'd like to thank the uh, board uh, of the Westchester County Association for honoring our 13,000 plus uh, team members across the Hudson Valley. Uh, I've, I've been at Westchester Medical Center for going on 17 years and um, have witnessed an incredible change. I think it was alluded to by Bill earlier. Uh, I, I will tell you that it was 17 years ago, not 10, because if, if I had, if, if we were almost going out of business after me being there seven years, I would not be standing here tonight, I can assure you. I've got some board members right behind you who are nodding, yeah. Uh, but um, we, we came in 2005 from a financially challenged organization to now a 10 hospital network across the Hudson Valley. And uh, uh, it has been a very interesting and I will say very fulfilling ride. Uh, but really nothing that has happened over the past 17 years, and really, uh, I hate to admit it, but the uh, 45 years uh, since I got out of graduate school uh, and started working in hospitals, there's nothing that has been as fulfilling as uh, the tireless and selfless work uh, of seeing our workforce uh, over the last 18 months of the pandemic. And I'd also like to say, I'd like to recognize uh, the hospital representatives here uh, tonight, not only from Westchester Medical Center and WMC Health, but of the other hospitals in the Hudson Valley, because I will tell everyone here, uh, I, I would say that for the most part, the competition between the hospitals is friendly competition, uh, but it is competition. But during the pandemic, uh, all of that, all of that was pushed aside. And I will say that I, I didn't see anybody act in a way other than what was best for the population of the Hudson Valley in the area we serve. So uh, my thanks are not only going to go to my staff, but also to all the other hospitals out there because uh, it was amazing to watch what transpired. Um, <laughs> You know, the, the, the interesting thing is that we were, all, we were all really stressed because if you think about it, we were operating, each hospital was operating two hospitals under one roof, COVID hospital and a non-COVID hospital. And there are a lot of things you can practice. Uh, we have disaster drills, you can practice uh, uh, car, you know, car crashes, you can airplane, you can, you can, you can practice everything. You can't practice a, a pandemic. And this is something that we all learn going forward. And quite frankly, I think it was, I, I think we did a really incredible job. Uh, our teams rose to the occasion and in December of uh, 2020, uh, New York State appointed WMC Health to serve as the vaccine distribution hub of the Hudson Valley. Uh, our workforce, again, uh, once again, adapted, worked with every hospital, work with every county, every local uh, state, Department of Health, community and uh, community-based organizations. I, the list goes on and on. But the bottom line is this was all done to assure fast, safe, and equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, I'm pr proud to say that so far, we've been able to coordinate the distribution of 2.5 million vaccine doses around the region, and we've been instrumental. Thank you. And we've been instrumental in successful operation of all the state-run mass vaccination centers in four Hudson Valley counties. Uh, WMC Health workforce members help construct vaccination sites, manage public flow, and administer over 530 vaccine doses at these sites. Uh, our vaccination work continues. Uh, just before Thanksgiving, we transferred uh, the mass vaccination operations from Westchester County Center to our Westchester campus. I will tell you that from my perspective, uh, uh, the county 
uh, the cooperation, the way we were able to work together was just absolutely, absolutely incredible. And uh, I'd like to thank those from, who were here from the county tonight, George, Ken, and the rest of the staff. Thank you, thank you so much for helping what should have been a very difficult process, uh, so much easier to, to work through, and again, for the good of the people who live in this region. You know, again, thank you all. Uh, I, I believe, and again, I believe our team and the teams of all of the hospitals and healthcare facilities across the region uh, have been fearless in the face of the pandemic. Uh, they adapted, executed, excelled, and when I take a look at our organization, I could not be prouder. So thank you for honoring us tonight and recognizing the outstanding work of all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. The Westchester County Association will always be there for the healthcare sector. Not only is it the most important economic driver in the region, but you all keep us safe. And for that, we thank you. Um, does anybody out there know who Babe Dahlgren is? Anybody? Any baseball fans? Exactly. That's the guy who replaced Lou Gehrig at first base in the Yankees. And sometimes when I come to work in the morning, that's what I feel like, having replaced Bill Mooney <laughs> as the present CEO of the Westchester County Association. So I'm going to call him up with Ann Jordan Duffy, Bill Mooney, who now works for Simone Development, and Ann Jordan Duffy, who's here on behalf of West Fair, and Dee Del Bello, to present our last award. Retirement treating you at Simone. Wow, it's, wow. I'm having a great time as you would expect. Uh, and tonight, since I haven't been here, uh, Michael asked me would I speak for about 50 minutes and tell you what I'm going to do. Is that okay? <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. So it Don't seems. Look, I, I, I thought this was Dee DiBello at first. Yeah, so what, a, what a transformation. It's amazing. <laughs> On behalf of Dee DiBello, who apologizes, uh, she got called to an emergency. Um, we have something special here today, tonight, don't we, Bill? Yes, we do. That we've been designated to close one chapter and open a new one. Uh, time, I guess, marches on, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, change is good, for the most part. Uh, Bill Harrington, who we're on here tonight, is, uh, I know, is very happy to be succeeded by Susan, that's for sure. I know Susan really well, and I know she's going to do a great job. So. And indeed, she's been making history in healthcare as the head of White Plains Hospital. And uh, she's going to do the same thing for the uh, Westchester County Association. I mean, just imagine this intellectual group, Michael and Susan together, doing their thing. It's going to be a wow going forward. There's no question about that. Uh, Billy and I had fun, but they're going to have more fun and do a lot of great things. You know, Al and Bill uh, worked so many years together, and Bill, you really deserve to, to be recognized for your commitment to the WCA. Um, I actually spoke to Dee this afternoon uh, when she got called away, and I said, you know, what would Al say about Bill Harrington? I'm going off script here, so forgive me. But I, I said to Dee, what would Al say? And, and Dee said, you know, Al really respected you, Bill. He didn't, he didn't see you as a competitor. He saw, he saw you as a great attorney. But more importantly, he thought you gave so much to the WCA and your commitment with the workforce and health care, and you really got it and you understood it. And she really wanted to emphasize that. She wanted me to emphasize that to you. Uh, I could probably spend about two days talking about Bill Harrington, I might add. Uh, he's been a gem in our community, to say the least. Uh, he knows all the parliamentary things. Being a lawyer, he's done conducted meetings, run the director's meetings, and, and he also made sure that the staff stayed on course with their objectives. Uh, but, you know, when you think about the chairman's people that we've had in the Westchester County Association, Al DeBello, uh, Bill Harrington, and now Susan Fox. 
it's like a wow, it's like a dream team when you really think about it. It's just amazing. Uh, tonight, though, we're going to be talking, I'm going to be talking about uh, Bill Harrington. Uh, Bill has an incredible knack to give back to the community. His family is, uh, is legendary in that. Uh, during Bill's tenure at the WCA, his vision, his leadership, and anybody who knows Bill knows about his passion. His passion is incredible for what he does as a family person, as uh, giving back to the community. His sense of humor, uh, you got a taste of it before, and his wit is it's just legendary. There's no question about that. I remember we had, we had a very tense moment in a, in a very difficult conversation. I think it was over a, a merger or something, and uh, I'll leave that up to your imagination. And uh, so anyway, I was going at it with somebody pretty good. And Bill turns around and he says, you know, hey, Bill, knock it off. Did you ever have an unexpressed thought? And I, I, I got the biggest kick at it. <laughs> I always remember that. Uh, and, and Bill's most, in my judgment, his most significant achievements in, in terms of being the chairman of the Westchester County Association was in the health care. Amy and I worked together on that. And I always remember her partners, and the people from the hospitals all know her partners. Her partners was the CEO of Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Now you go back 12, 13 years ago, when we were just beginning to recognize the infrastructure of the healthcare community and the importance of it. And Herb was amazed at Bill Harrington's grasp of the issues of, of healthcare. And more importantly, he was amazed at the ability of Bill and his passion to try to help the healthcare community. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have Bill at a time when things were a little bit rocky in the healthcare community, and, and we got a $9 million grant uh, from the government, uh, w w along with, the, uh, uh, with George Latimer and his team, and a $9 million grant, and we were able to help the healthcare community work through a lot of issues with respect to employment. And uh, Jason and, and Amy really worked through that whole process. Uh, like I said, I could go on and on and on about Bill's tireless energy and what he has done for our community. Uh, I don't know anybody in this community who has done more for it in so many different ways with respect to the Westchester County Association. I don't know anybody who has the passion that he has to help his community. I don't know anybody who is such a great family man as Bill. I don't know anybody who has done so much for so many people. Uh, he was a great chairman. He was a wonderful uh, mentor to me in many different ways. And I'm proud to know Bill. I'm proud to call him my friend. So with that, I could go on and on, but I think uh, you get tired of it after a while. So anyway. Uh, I was going to say D, that's part of my script, D and I, but it's Ann and I are honored to recognize you with this well-deserved Aldebello Award, Bill. I'm famous for my one more things. Isn't Michael doing a great job? I hope my weight goes as well. Um, gee whiz, that was, uh, that was lovely. Thank you, Bill and Ann. Uh, Al Del Bello represents the highest level of integrity and service in both the public and uh, private sectors. He was, a, he was a friend. He was another boy from Yonkers. I grew up in Yonkers. My family grew up in Yonkers. We take great pride in Yonkers. And uh, so it's, I, I don't deserve any award, uh, let alone uh, one that bears Al's name. Uh, I did nothing more than my job for which I don't deserve any credit. However, I am humbled and grateful. The past nine years have been a wonderful, enriching blessing for me. 
I have met and worked with so many terrific people in this room doing meaningful work that has made a real difference in people's lives. Therefore, it is I who should be thanking you, and I am. I appreciate your trust, your patience, and support over the last nine years. I appreciate the fact that when you thought you made a mistake, you didn't mention it in having me as your chairperson. I've met many people in the room, and some of you are just acquaintances, and I hope to get to meet you more, that I have a little more time on my hand. And for those who I haven't got to meet, please give me a chance. We have a lot of work to do, and I'd like to do it with you. Time does not permit me to recognize everyone that I should. However, I would be remiss not to recognize my wife, Carolyn. She's a saint. She may be the first saint canonized for having three miracles in one person. Um, her patience is legendary. I don't want to thank my law partners who have put up with my frenetic schedule. And I want to thank Amy Allen for ensuring that I arrived on time and in the right place, including tonight. And finally, I want to thank my dear friend, Bill Mooney. Bill, you filled a huge void in my life after my dad passed away 11 years ago. Um, I miss my dad to this day. He was, a, he was a remarkable man, and I'm proud to be his son. But Bill became a surrogate father for me. We bonded. We were able to share things that only a father and a son could typically share and that I could have, I would have shared with my dad if he was around, but he wasn't. And so we developed this wonderful relationship that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. He is a piece of work. He does not have an unexpressed thought. He's, a, he's as deaf as a post, and he never shuts up. But my life would be so much less without knowing you, Bill. So thank you all. It's been a blast. So uh, we're now at the end of the program and the most important part. Before I have some brief remarks about Susan Fox, I would like to ask you again to review uh, this brief video where a few of her friends got together. It's just wonderful to be here with so many of my great colleagues in Westchester County, strong women leaders who are making a difference through our respective fields. I think women bring to uh, an organization certain innate skills. Women have the ability and maybe even the humility to be able to ask questions, ask for help. I think the network effect applies so significantly to women in leadership, I think we are very good listeners. We have to wear so many hats. We're very empathetic to others, and I think we're natural team builders. One of my top priorities and initiatives is to ensure that we have a curriculum that is preparing a digitally trained workforce for uh, the times that we're living in, for the kind of needs related to diversity and understanding who's being served and, and who we're developing as people and talent to be ready for the workforce. Workforce is incredibly challenging for us post-pandemic because I care a lot about inequality and I feel that it's important to be, um, as a good employer, to pay people properly. I have to, you know, have a budget that supports my employees and their families appropriately. For me, it's been si se puede, which means yes, you can. It's always been about, yes, you can make it happen, you can do it. Um, so si se puede has been my big mantra. L-O-V-E, which stands for Letting Others' Vitality Emerge. 
And as a leader, I've had to learn how to get out of the way of our, our most talented and creative people and, and not be the sage on the stage, but more of the guide on the side. You're only as good as your team. And, and I truly believe that any success I have had, I have to give credit to the people that supported me in that effort. Work-life balance is, is just hard. It's, ne it's never gonna be easy. The last 22 months have been really tough in finding a work-life balance. I think that having many balls in the air that are all important to me. My kids, my kids' well-being, making sure they're doing their homework, but also being able to go to work events in the evening and you know, doing a good job at work and being a good team member. You really need to relax or you can't really put your whole mind um, to a project if, you know, if, you're, if your thoughts are other places. So you have to make sure that you're spending time with your family, that your family is safe, that they're taken care of. And it's difficult and it's also wonderful at the same time. But we're coming full circle. Lila Wallace of Reader's Digest was the founding member. So she was the woman in the room when the WCA was founded. So welcome, Susan, and I know you're gonna keep the history and the tradition and the success going. Well, I wanna say congratulations, Susan. Uh, you have all of the tools in the portfolio that demonstrate excellence. Susan, you have got this, and I know you're gonna do amazing, and the WCA did an excellent job in choosing you. So everything you need to know about Susan Fox is explained by the following. She graduated from the Columbia Nursing School with a degree in nursing, and she was a trained and practicing pediatric um, intensive care nurse. Nurses are very special people. They're smart. They're selfless by profession. They clean up other people's messes. They run toward emergencies. They console and comfort. They are tough. And they do not suffer fools. I know. I've been married to a nurse for 38 years. So no one should be surprised that Susan has excelled once she decided to pursue a career in hospital administration. You just have to check her jobs. She began her career at the Healthcare Administration in North Shore Medical System. She joined White Plains Hospital in 2010 as a VP of administration. In 2011, she was promoted to executive VP. In 2013, president and in 2015 was elevated to CEO. During her tenure, she has guided White Plains Hospital through a series of facility and medical practice expansions. It is now recognized as one of the premier hospitals in the region. And during this period, Susan still found time to serve on various boards, such as the Columbia Nursing School Board of Visitors, Haney's, and AHA. Susan, I have never met somebody more overqualified for a position before. We are so lucky to have you, and I'm thrilled to introduce you. Please welcome our new chairperson, Susan Fox. Thank you, that was lovely. Wow, there's a lot of people here. It's a different view. Thank you uh, so much, Bill. Um, I'm so glad that I could be here uh, to welcome you and to be the closing act. It's almost over. Um, Bill, I'm so happy uh, that we could celebrate you tonight and the Al Del Bello Visionary Award is such a fitting tribute to all of your service um, through the Westchester County Association. And um, we're so grateful to you and um, thrilled that everybody could actually turn out to give you that send off. And um, just another. Applause. 
Um, so I certainly have big shoes to fill. I don't know if that I'm overqualified, but um, there are a few differences between us, just a few. And one is, as has been noted, is he's a lot funnier than me. So I'm sorry, I will work on it, but right away you got the funny on me. Um, thank you for that um, amazing introduction and thank you for um, all the individuals that participated in that video. Uh, what a powerful group of women. I don't know that I got to see everybody tonight. I don't know if everybody's here, but um, Sherlita, Allie, Belinda, Lindsay, Theodora, and Robin, um, thank you so much for sharing your personal stories and insights on women in leadership. What role models you all are in your respective industries. As Ali said, the picture of Lila Wallace of the iconic Reader's Digest sitting amongst all of those men, wow, has the world changed. I am sure Lila would be very impressed by all of you, in addition to our very first female governor of New York, Kathy Hochul. I am in awe of all of you and feel very fortunate for all the support. Thank you to all those wonderful women. Those of you who are close to me know that the thought of being in this room tonight was one that I was definitely looking forward to, but with just a little bit of trepidation, maybe a lot. The healthcare industry remains very COVID cautious. For the last almost two years, before my feet hit the ground in the morning, I reach over for my iPhone and I check the numbers. What's going on in the hospital? What's going on in the county? What's going on in the state? What's going on in, across the United States? in terms of the numbers. And while our state and our county has been and is a leader in vaccinations with 85% of Westchester residents over 18 receiving at least one dose of the vaccine, holiday gatherings and threats of the new variants remain. There's nothing like being together. The warmth in this room is something we all miss and to celebrate the honorees tonight in person feels like the only way to do it. The night itself is a representation of how, as leaders of the business community, we need to balance between caution and resuming life as we knew it. We are determined. In addition to celebrating Bill, my congratulations also to tonight's honorees Skanska, West Hab, and Westchester Medical Center, you have all positively impacted the lives of our neighbors across the Hudson Valley in such significant ways. We'll do one more. Congratulations to all of them. And I too would like to highlight uh, Mike Romita. Uh, Mike, you're coming up on two years with us as the leader of the WCA. Everyone in this room is grateful for your timely taking over the reins. We realize you were handed a very huge challenge with COVID, and I think we all agree that you met the mark very quickly. Finding ways to keep everyone engaged with virtual programming, online networking events, and career chats. Thank you, Michael, and the entire WCA team for your efforts to make tonight special and for all the work that you've done throughout the years. Thank you. And of course, um, Bill, you've been recognized again and again and again. Um, we, we cannot get through a WCA meeting without recognizing you, and you know that um, you have a lot, a, lot, a lot of love in the room, and you're in our hearts, and we're so glad that you could be with us tonight. Whether it's advocating for its members with lawmakers, expanded digital connectivity, creating programs for workforce development, or engaging with county leaders to take actionable steps to ensure that Westchester is the best county to live and work in, the WCA is a force and has accomplished so much. Collaboration is at the heart of the work that the WCA has been doing for the last 70 plus years. Never did we see the value and impact of collaboration be as strong as when we fought as a community to get Westchester businesses back through COVID. These examples have been talked about by County Executive Latimer, who is still here. George, um, your team were amazing. You um, 
put a task force together for COVID with leaders across the county. Uh, your designees, Joan McDonald and Bridget Gibbons, fielded and facilitated so many challenging questions, but everybody was always on those Zoom meetings, thinking together, working together, supporting each other, and getting us through to the other side. Thank you for your leadership and show of the power of collaboration and working together. And Mike, Mike and I actually worked together, and I was saying, was that 10 years ago? And he said, 17 years. Okay, I just want to know. All right, I'm going to be a little funny. Why do you look like that and I look like this, okay? You have not aged. You look amazing. So something good must be going on at Westchester Medical Center. Okay, okay. Um, Mike, um, you talked about the role of Westchester Medical Center uh, in COVID, and it, your team performed amazingly. We couldn't be more grateful for what was done and the comfort that um, you and your team gave all of us to provide information, to be transparent. And even when we were disappointed, um, the transparency and the honesty and the communication and the collaboration was what got us through. And I'd just like to note um, Josh Ratner, who I think I saw someplace, I don't know where, but Josh was an amazing pick on your part to lead those meetings, and he did an amazing job, and um, everyone really trusted him, and he was a great advocate, and thank you for all of that work. So by working across public and private sectors, we saw the power and positive and timely impact of working together, we did good. One of the priorities of Westchester County Association has been workforce development. This will be even more important in the future as the pandemic has brought with it many new workforce challenges. Just prior to the pandemic in 2019, there were nearly 32,000 businesses in Westchester, employing nearly 400,000 people and paying almost 27 billion in annual payroll and healthcare and the life sciences industry contributes to about two-thirds of that, amazing. As we think about the future and what needs to be accomplished, we need to harness the energy of collaboration and put it on overdrive. By coming together, we will maximize our efforts to build back stronger. In closing, we all know Westchester County is a special place. It is home to world-class organizations, both big and small, boasts a highly educated workforce, competitive colleges and universities, cutting edge research centers, and in my opinion, a community that cares deeply about its local businesses and the well-being of its neighbors. Yes, times are very challenging, but I always keep in mind the thought that we only have so much time to make a difference. It is a great honor to be able to live and work and serve in the same community. It is a great honor to work with the board and the executive committee of the WCA. And it is a great honor to get to know all of you better and to work side by side to make a difference. Thank you all so much for being here and your commitment to the WCA. We can now celebrate, be safe, and have a wonderful holiday season. I think it's behind this curtain. Thank you, everyone.